Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Cryptids and Monsters video. Alright, let's go ahead and let's continue this series here by picking yet another new suggestion this go around. And this one is following the theme of my last video where it has to do with yet another cryptid, something involving a tiny one, a smaller version of a cryptid. So considering how many views the mysterious gnomes of Wallaton Park got the last go around, I thought I would mix this one in because it does seem like you uh, guys and gals seem to enjoy these particular cryptids. And interestingly enough, it also has to do with a cryptid that is involved with a very famous franchise, a movie franchise. And I'll go ahead and I'll talk about that here in a minute too. But it has to do with this. You're looking at this cryptid now. It's an ancient cryptid, something involving uh, Native American tales from who knows how far back, and to this day, apparently still sightings out there as well. It has a very unique name too. It's known as the Puck Waji. I hope I'm saying that correctly, and I hope somebody uh, is able to point that out afterwards in the comment, but at least that's how I think it said, Puck Waji. So let's go ahead and let's talk about all the fascinating information associated with this cryptid and more importantly the uh the, the 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 way that it was incorporated in this case to the movie franchise so pretty interesting stuff i don't recall another cryptid being involved in something like this so so what is this pukwaji well it's a cryptid that's again been around for a long time so long in fact that it's been part of Native American legend for who knows how long. Anything involving Native Americans, I mean, we're talking since before, of course, the West was conquered here in the U.S. So this is something that's just been passed down throughout that time period, not just here in the United States, but also apparently in Canada. And then if you go to the Great Lakes region, you'll also find uh, various versions or various legends associated with this very unique cryptid. And what makes it unique is this. So there's uh, tales involving it being good and then also involving it being bad. So when I was reading all this information, it kind of made me wonder how close these things are to people, like in this case to, to, uh, to, to human beings. Because obviously if you take like 100 people and you uh, start uh, looking at them individually, you will find some of them are pretty good people and then others are bad people, such as the case here with this Pukwaji. But as far as his physical characteristics, let's talk about that first. So this thing, just like I mentioned with regards to my last video involving the mysterious gnomes of Wellington Park, these things are very tiny as well. In fact, they're only going to be about knee high at most, and they're known to be even smaller than that on average. So tiny, tiny, in this case, cryptids. If you run into them, you probably will literally run into them if you're out there in their region. It's going to be hard, though, to do so because of the of the other items that I'll talk about that here. But, yes, they're tiny, tiny people. Uh, they're, for all intents and purposes, they tend to be, uh, like, uh, considered older folks. Like, they have this skin associated with them that kind of gives them, like, an older folk. Again, kind of tied to the notion of something involving gnomes as well. But everything else seems to be pretty standard. Like, they have this gray face. They have larger ears, like also involving gnomes, like pretty standard when it comes to them. And then also they have these exaggerated hands, like larger hands than usual when it comes to, let's say, their size. The ears that I was mentioning earlier and then the feet as well. So stuff like this definitely stands out when you see these uh, these Pukwajis because not only because of their stature, but some of their exaggerated features too. Interestingly enough, they also seem to emit a smell. So if you happen to be in a forest area, which is their known habitats, and you smell what's considered a sweet smell, especially with regards to flowers, and then uh, knowing that, of course, that there's no flowers around, then you do have a chance of running into these Pukwajis. That ties into their locations. Yes, you would have to go into forest areas, northeastern United States, southeastern Canada, the Great Lakes region, like I was mentioning earlier, go into any of those forests, and that's where you would find these things. Ties into, again, gnomes, like enchanted forest type stuff, where those are the main habitats of these creatures. And the way they were talked about by all these various tribes is the people that went there to the forest respected these Pukwajis because they knew they were there and the Pukwajis and vice versa knew that the humans were there too, but it was all about respecting their boundaries. They didn't do anything to necessarily piss these cryptids off. It was all about ensuring that that that, that they had like a 
a friendly stance between each other. This is important because of this. As far as their um, actual characteristics, not physical, but in this case, the way that they acted, I talked about that earlier, most of them were good. They were considered good-natured creatures. They were there to help humans in some cases, like if there was humans that were getting lost in the forest, they would direct them to the right areas. Or if there were area, uh, like humans that were in a dangerous situation, they would try to do so as well, as long as, again, they were treated with respect. It was almost like, uh, I'm not here to cause any bad harm, but at the same time, I'm not going to let you walk over me. That's the kind of attitude that these creatures had, that these Pukwajis had there. Conversely, there are other tribes uh, from Native American tribes that talked about them being bad, very dangerous, in fact. In fact, um, uh, they were there to truly cause harm to people, even in some cases, death. And the way it occurred was this. These Pukwajis are known to disappear and reappear at will. So much so that they almost could be considered spirits of the forest. That's how various Native Americans apparently considered them. So they could appear out of thin air and then disappear as is. Now the notion whether they truly disappeared, like let's say completely, is one side. The other side is this, they simply turned invisible. Like they're still there, you could probably still touch them, and they had a physical presence, but they were just invisible, or they learned how to be invisible. And then there's the other side, like I mentioned, where they just completely just disappeared and reappeared elsewhere. Either way though, they would use that ability, that set of quote-unquote magical powers, because some Native American tribes considered them that, as being able to play these very bad tricks on people, especially those that pissed them off, those that disrespected them. They would confuse people. They would get them lost. Imagine, again, being in a forest. And I talked about this one of my past cryptids. I can't remember which one it was that would do this as well. But imagine that you're there, lost, and you have some hope, maybe if you follow a river, because the idea is if you follow a river, it'll eventually lead to civilization. But there these things were, making sure that no matter where you went, following the river, you still ended up hopelessly lost in the forest. You would die a very slow death. You would die of starvation, and then finally, uh, combined with um, dehydration, it would just be a very, very slow death. And they would do this because either they felt, again, they were harmed, or they just felt like just doing it. Like, there was them. They were just bad at that point. In some cases, Pukwajis were considered enemies of many of the tribes that were there because they were responsible for the death of so many uh, Native Americans that wandered into those forests. So that's how bad things got when it comes to these creatures. Um, and then on top of that, too, there's this other notion, the fact that these things can actually shapeshift as well. I didn't really read too much info on that, but again, that's another angle. They could shapeshift into other creatures that were within the forest, and in some cases, actual creatures that are very dangerous, like cougars or lions, mountain lions, uh, bears, other types of creatures that could truly just harm people just as is. So who knows, maybe if you're in a forest and all of a sudden something just appears, like in this case a cougar, you may just have wandered into the realm of these Pukwajis and it has shapeshifted into a very dangerous creature. And then following that theme involving these things being pretty bad to humans, some of them can just cause ill will or harm just by staring at people. That scared me the most when I was reading this information because you've probably never had a chance, never seen this cryptid out there in the forest. You've inadvertently entered its location and it is going to get you. And the way it gets you is just staring at you from far away. You probably get that sense, you know, like where you have, you know, that, that, that creepy feeling on the back of your neck. Like you feel something, somebody's staring at you, you just can't picture what it is or can't find it. But it could be one of these things, these Pukwajis just basically staring at you and then it causing you ill harm. The way I was reading it was almost like a curse, like a silent curse that just comes across to you uh, somewhere along the way in the air and it's able to hit you and then it'll cause severe harm. So that's pretty scary stuff when you're dealing 
with these unique creatures. But otherwise, for the most part, um, if you run into the good ones, they're just considered good. As long as you leave them alone or treat them with respect, and you're fine. And every now and then, they may do just little tricks to you, like probably, uh, you know, launch a whistle here and there to try to distract you. But that's it. Nothing really else bad associated with them. Now, as far as how this is tied to, uh, in this case, a movie franchise, it's Harry Potter, the Harry Potter universe. Admittedly, I've never been involved with the Harry Potter world, never seen any of the movies, never read any of the books. It's just one of those things that I'm sure it interests a lot of other people, clearly, considering how much money it's made, but it's just never really interested me. It's a lot like the Lord of the Rings films. I'm a f uh, familiar with them, but I'm not necessarily like reading their books or watching all of the movies. Uh, so in this case, in the world of Harry Potter, some of you might know this stuff and others not, but J.K. Rowling actually placed these creatures in the universe. In fact, they seem to be involved with some kind of school. Like I think they're, they're like they have a crest or some kind of icon or image associated with them. And in fact, she describes the creatures in 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 one of the. Uh, I guess, text or something, and this is as follows. The Pukwudgi is a native to America, short, gray-faced, large-eared creature distantly related to the European goblin. Fiercely independent, tricky, and not over fond of humankind, it possesses its own powerful magic, and Pukwudgi's hunt with deadly, poisonous arrows and enjoy playing tricks on human. I forgot to mention that, too, about another characteristic about these Pukwudgi's. Another way they can cause harm is they launch these poison arrows that hit people. So if you're hit with one of those, then you too will die a slow death because poison is one of the worst ways to go when it comes to being harmed. Not only that, but they can also launch these arrows to create fire. So not only are you lost, but now in this case, you're getting hit with fire or be or fires created around you and you're going to suffocate to death, uh, if not being burned to death outright. So J.K. Romney seems to go with that notion that these things are more on the dangerous side. So those of you that have seen the Harry Potter movies, um, point it out to me, please, if, if, if you've seen them, like if they have a big part in the films or if it's just a tiny cat cameo, if you could call it, uh, that'd be great to hear too. So, but yes, as far as them being involved in the billion dollar franchise, absolutely. Pukwudgies are associated with the Harry Potter world. And again, I can't really think of any other cryptid that has its actual like name and characteristics tied to that type of franchise that, you know, huge franchise. So, but if anybody has more info on that, post those comments, that'd be great to hear. So, so what do you guys think? Pukwa geez, this is something, to, is something to be feared out there right now in the forest of the United States, maybe some parts of Canada. Uh, has anybody run into them or heard of others that have as well? Remember, the characteristics are a sweet smell, flowery-like if, you, if, you, if you're in the forest, or if you start seeing these tiny, tiny knee-high folks that are just running around appearing and disappearing at will then that's where you're running into them too so but otherwise if anybody has any more info that they'd like to share something might have missed it'd be great to hear post those comments too so all right everybody thanks again as always take care